everyone and welcome to the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Carmen and you can find me right here. I hope I might put it in a different text color this time because it's very bright in here and I don't know if the white text shows up. So um, I've been on a little break. I've had uh, one week off. We went on a birding trip. Um, yeah, my boyfriend is quite the enthusiastic birder. Um, and we went with his sister and her boyfriend um, to the west coast of France. Uh, so that was a really nice break and I got to see the UK. <laughs> uh, it was as close as I came to Yarndale because uh, I think Yarndale was that weekend, the Saturday and Sunday. Um, and I did a lot of knitting. Um, I actually finished all of my projects. Um, shock, <laughs> gasp, yes. I brought three projects and they were all quite small so um, yeah but I was happy to have finished them all. But first off we have a sock along running in my Facebook group which is the shoe matching sock along and you can follow everyone's pictures uh, and everyone's works in progress by searching the hashtag SMSAL shoe matching sock along and you can also join my Facebook group which is New Leaf Designs Knitting and Crochet crew um, and I have finished my pair of socks and I showed that last time two weeks ago so I knit these lace socks that I will be wearing with some heels and I do plan to knit another pair because the the pair of shoes that I wanted to knit socks for it doesn't match quite nicely so I'm going to knit another pair and probably choose a uh, different lace pattern for that. The pattern of these socks is not out yet. It will be out in December. So um, just forget about it for now. <laughs> uh, a pattern that did come out recently is the Momo Pet Bed. And I will put a picture up on the screen. Um, and... Momo has finally decided to actually sit on the pet bed, uh, although not yet of her own. I have to put her on there and then pray that she doesn't run off. Um, she did put a paw on it very tentatively, but then did not go to sit on it. Uh, but yeah, she's just very, very cute. <laughs> And uh, when she does stay on the pet bed, she kind of needs the fabric like this. And it's really, really, really cute. Uh, so the Momo pet bed pattern, it's crochet pattern, is up on my website for free. Uh, my website is newleafdesigns.nl. So um, if you have a furry friend or maybe a kid or you would like a floor cushion for yourself, because yes, it is that big, uh, then um, feel free to make it. So for me, workshop season has begun. Uh, my first workshop is going to be November 5th. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm just going to have a lot of events the, in the near future. So November 5th is my first workshop and it's the Fin Hat Workshop. And I've made some new samples. So, uh, and it's in Zwolle. Uh, in the Happy Crafts store and I don't think the workshop is up on the website yet. Uh, the, the person from the store, she's on holiday until today so it should be up on Monday. But um, if you want to uh, get in on one of the workshops that I have for Zwolle or Harlem, uh, which are both Happy Crafts and both of the stores have a Thin Hat Workshop and a Cozy Moments Workshop. You can all, always send me an email at hello at newleafdesigns.nl and I will just um, help you help you book, book a place if, uh, if it's not up on their website yet. So the Thin Hat is a Fair Isle, or I shouldn't say Fair Isle, it's a stranded color work hat. Um, you knit it with three colors but you only use two colors at a time. And it's really, really cute. It's really, really easy, really quick. So it's perfect for your first uh, stranded color work pattern. Uh, I knit these two. Um, I, I have knit 
you know, I have knit samples before. One I gifted and the other one is very much used by my boyfriend and it's looking very lopsided. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I am using Scapey's Namaste, which is the original yarn that I used for this pattern. Um, Scapey's Namaste. And all of the colorways have uh, yoga pose names. So this is the Locust uh, Plow. <laughs> I don't know any of the scale. I don't know any of those yoga poses. Um, and Revolved Triangle. That sounds too complicated for me. Um, but yes, I chose these four colors. And for the first hat, I chose this as the main color, this as the first contrast color, and then this beautiful mustard as the uh, second contrast color. And then for the second hat, I used this as the main color, and then also these two as contrast colors, but I swapped them. So... Yes, I like it very, very much. Um, so I will be teaching the Fin Hat Workshop November 5th in Zwolle, and then I haven't remembered the date for Haarlem. Um, and I will also be teaching it in Deinze, which is in Belgium, on December 15th at Atelier 9A. Um, and I will I will link their websites down below. And for the workshop in Deinze in Atelier 9A, uh, we will be using Scapius Namaste. And in Happy Crafts, we will be using Scapius Chunky Monkey. And I will also be knitting up some samples for that. So that is, um, this is a, wool blend yeah 50 percent wool 50 percent acrylic and uh, scapey's junky monkey is 100 percent acrylic it's the same uh uh thickness i think um but yeah it's just a little bit more economical um a little bit more budget friendly and i have so this is the original it's, it's a very small difference, but uh, this is the one where I also use purl stitches. And you were able to see that better for my first two samples. I think my gauge has changed a little bit. So for the first two samples, you actually saw like a white bar. Um, because I think that I knitted a little bit loosely back then. Um, so you purl the stitch and then, you know, for the first two hats, it showed up more um, as, a purl stitch, uh, as a purl stitch than as a knit stitch. But uh, here it actually tucks into the fabric. So I, I decided, well, I'll just try it as a knit stitch. And it looks very cute too, like a little heart. So you can choose which option you want. Um, but uh, yeah, I just uh, really like these hats. I made this one in a day and this one over several days. But uh, it's it's a very, very quick knit. You knit on 6 millimeter needles. So um, yeah, or even 8 millimeter needles. So yeah, it's a very, very quick knit. And just popping in, because I forgot to say this, uh, if you want to learn how to knit color work, uh, so like this or like this um, and you can't come to one of these workshops then I do have a workshop online and masterclass even so you can go to my patreon page that is patreon.com slash new leaf designs um, and I have a bunch of videos and master classes on there for color work, for sweater knitting, shawl knitting. Uh, and that is a subscription, uh, which is starts from just five euros a month, I think. Um, it, it shows the amount in dollars to me, so I'm not quite sure. Um, and, and if you want to just get the color work masterclass as a one-off. I also have a, I also have the masterclass on Thinkific. That is another website. Uh, and there you can just buy the masterclass. It's uh, $59 right now. Um, 
and then you just have it. It's not a subscription, you just buy it and then you have it. Whereas on Patreon, you have the videos, access to all videos for as long as you have the subscription. So I just wanted to pop in and say that um, because I forgot. So back to the show. <laughs> So I made those for the first set of workshops. And then I also have some sock workshop workshops planned. And uh, I knit some mini socks. And I put them on a small garland. I thought it was very cute. Um, so let me show you up close. So the sock workshops, uh, I'm going to be teaching that in Deinze in Belgium at Atelier Nega. And first up in um, uh, November 6th, so that's a Saturday, I'm going to be teaching sock knitting for beginners. And um, yeah, I tried several mini socks to see what kind of the ideal size is because, uh, and I, I just, um, during a sock workshop, I want people to knit the sock from toe to cuff uh, and finish it completely in one workshop. So I might cut out some of the, like, stockinette of the foot and of the leg so that we just get to the important bits because, let's face it, no one is going to wear socks this small. I mean, maybe babies, but whatever. Um... So I just want to do the toe cast on, toe increases. And then this is kind of not relevant for the workshop because it's just, you know, <laughs> it's plain knitting. So, uh, so I just want to get to the heel quickly and then the cuff, which might also be, um, you know, I also have some tips and tricks for that um, with a st stretchy bind off. And... So this is, of course, a smaller sock, um, and I did a contrasting heel here as well, uh, and here I didn't. And I think if you've never knit a sock before, it's very uh, helpful to know that if you change a color, you know, how does it kind of show up? Because with a shorter heel, it looks very neat, but with a um, gusset and heel flap heel, it doesn't look as nice, I think. Yeah, but in this workshop, this first workshop on the 6th uh, of November, I'm going to be teaching the simple toe up socks. Um, and this one, so I knit this sample a little bit bigger, and also I knit, oh, <laughs> there's the sun. I knit the texture pattern in here. Uh, so you might be able to see that. I'm not sure if I will be doing that during the workshop. Um, I think we will just be doing simple stockinette just to keep it as clear as possible. Um, so yes, oh yeah, and um, uh, I knit a one by one ribbing here and a two by two ribbing here and I think I also use a different bind off. So. I'll be knitting up a couple more. And then this one I knit up for my Afterthought Heel workshop, which is on January 19th, uh, also in uh, Atelier Nega. And um, yeah, for the Afterthought Heel, you basically knit the sock tube and then put in the heel. You make a cut and then open up a gap where you knit the heel and I think that is very exciting uh, and here I knit a one by one twisted rib let me hold those together one by one regular and one by one twisted rib can you see the difference I can't hold it up close because the sunlight will yeah yeah, so uh, I'm going to knit up a couple more uh, of these tiny socks because I think they're very cute and also I just want to uh, determine what the best size is to make because in this one there's also a lot of stockinette so ideally I want to uh, shorten that a little bit. Um, and I was thinking perhaps 
I should make a sock, but just, you know, um, the, the purpose is so that people can um, try out the afterthought heel. So it's basically about the technique, right? So I thought, why not uh, create a second heel right here? You know, it won't be a sock anymore. It might be a very uh, strange sock puppet, you know, with a, another heel right here. But uh, that way they can try out the technique twice. So. Yeah, I'm just um, having some thoughts because a lot of the time when I see a sock workshop being advertised, they often have it spread out across two or three uh, times um, and that, you know, they, they knit the toe and then, you know, they have homework and then for the second time they knit the heel and then, you know, uh, but I want, I think that's too expensive because, um, yeah, it just takes up more time, and if you can do it in miniature style, you can do it in one workshop, and um, it's not a big investment like that for people. And um, yeah, so I am uh, actually very excited about doing workshops again. Uh, my last workshop was last year in July, and that was with mouth mask and everything. Um, yeah, so I'm very excited for that. I do still have time to plan other workshops, so if you have a yarn shop or if you have your local yarn shop um, where you want me teaching workshops, then just send me an email at hello at newleafdesigns.nl and we will see if we can still fit in a date. Um, I also have some other events coming up. So uh, in the Netherlands, uh, the first knitting fairs are starting again. Uh, one is next week, October 15th and 16th, the uh, Breidage, the knitting days. I'm not sure if I'll be going, um, but uh, yeah, my hands are like tingling. I, I want to go, but um, yeah, it's, it's quite a long way. So. Um, and then I will be at the Creadu in uh, Utrecht, which is, um, it starts on October 27th, and I'll be there that day on the Wednesday. And then I think it continues until Saturday or Sunday. Um, and I'll be there on the Wednesday at the Schepje stand, and you can ask me anything, and I'll bring lots of samples, and uh, we can take pictures, and uh, yeah, I'll just... Um, I'm very looking forward to it very much and um, I know it's going to be an amazing stand so you don't want to miss it. They just had a publication, Yarn 12, uh, which is filled with beautiful, beautiful designs. I just loaned the book I sent out to my mom so I don't have it here to show you. But um, it's, it's really, really stunning. I've written a blog post about it so I'll link that below and you can check out all of the beautiful patterns. Um, yeah, and the stand is just beautifully decorated, and I'll be doing some vlogging, of course. So that's October 27th, and then that same week, uh, during the Halloween weekend, I'll be going on a yarn cruise <laughs> here in the Netherlands. Um, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not going to be about the cruise, but it's going to be about the knitting, I think, mostly. Uh, so we'll, we'll be visiting a few cities and I think vis visiting some like ancient Roman remains or something. Um, uh, but mostly we'll have workshops on the boat. There will be, I think, 60 people on board. Um, and everyone will get a uh, crochet or knitting pattern from me. Um, and then, uh, and there will also be other, other patterns that people can download and then, uh, we will have a cast on party on day one and, uh, yeah, I'm just so looking forward to it. I am taking my mom, um, yeah, we're, we're actually going to that, so it's organized by a yarn store and we're going to that yarn store this, uh, Saturday to pick up some yarns, um, to cast on some projects and yeah I'm just really looking forward to it and then the week after my workshops begin so whew, uh, yeah it's going to be a really busy time for me but um, I'm actually looking forward to it because this summer has been very slow 
uh, also sales wise I mean mainly sales wise um, I have been doing a lot of stuff but um, yeah I mean who knits in summer right and then, so, uh, I also brought another project with me on the trip. So I finished the hats, I finished some socks, and I cast on some socks, and I finished them. And this is going to be a pattern in November, I think. Um, <laughs> I haven't even cut the thread on one of the socks because I didn't have my scissors in this bag. Oh, and I have some beach souvenirs in here. Look, this rock is shaped like a heart. I like it. Um, so, I really like um, uh, like foot scrubs and stuff um, and um, using lots of thick creams on my feet, but then putting on socks, it just feels kind of icky because I know that the the cream will kind of seep through my socks and maybe I'll make stains on the floor and it just feels a little bit icky. So uh, what I thought was um, I wanted to make a pair of spa socks uh, that are kind of, they kind of work like a scrub and they're kind of thicker as well so that when you when you finish your foot bath or your foot scrub and then you rub your feet with uh, cream um, that you know the the kind of the foot spa treatment continues in the socks um, because it kind of rubs the cream further into your socks uh, into your feet so I knit up these socks and they're shorty socks because um yeah i mean your legs are not included in a foot spa so and i thought <laughs> i want to be able to knit one sock with just one ball um let me show you the yarn um so this is left after knitting one sock uh this is uh scapius mighty and um, it has jute or jute. <laughs> I don't know how to uh, pronounce the English uh, word. I mean, I'll just say jute because that's how we say it. So it's 32% jute, 68% uh, cotton. And it feels kind of rough, but um, we all know jute, like linen, it softens up with wear, use, and washing, and um, actually it does also feel kind of soft already, but I've knit it up in a texture pattern to make it extra rough. Um, so let me just zoom in because otherwise I can't show you. Zoom in. Yes. Hello. <laughs> so can you see the pattern? It is a broken rib. And so you knit stockinette one round and then you knit ribbing one round. Um, German shorter heel. And then I did a twisted rib because I thought it looked nice. And on the inside, it's mostly pearl. So you will see that on the inside, it is very textured. Can you see that? So this will be scrubbing against your feet. So yeah, load your feet up with loads of lotion and cream and then put on these socks and All right, the camera was overheating and so was I. Um, and <laughs> the sun is kind of moving. So uh, <laughs> I took a break, got some iced coffee and the camera is in a different place right now. But yes, the spa socks, so I knit these in Scapies Mighty, Ute, and Cotton Yarn in a lovely texture pattern. It's going to be available in six adult sizes as usual, or maybe, maybe fewer sizes because this is very stretchy. Um, and uh, I was able to use my cute birdie stitch marker because I was going on a birding trip after all. 
and yeah so um, this this will still be a pattern in production and I'm actually planning on creating a spa set um, and you'll have to wait and see what the other item is um, yes but this is going to be out in November at least I think that's how I planned it um, but I wanted to give you a little sneak peek anyway so that was the last um, project that I took on my vacation. I realize now that I forgot to tell you the yarn that I use for my socks. So these were knit in Scapius Metropolis. Um, this is Monterey, uh, colorway 23. This is, oh, I want to say Colombo. Uh, this is Suwon, which I think is 17, and then this I think is Koda 24. Um, don't ask me how I memorize things, I just do. Um, and then this is Capius Downtown in, uh, <laughs> I know this one I've forgotten, Baker's Corner? I don't know, it's, but it's the only like super pastel sweet one and it seems to be everyone's favorite. So um, yes, but Scapies Downtown and Scapies Metropolis are my go-to yarns for socks and I absolutely love them. And then now, so I have two um, new projects. Okay, one is a new project, one is a... Uh, project that I'm continuing. So uh, today is the start of the Mystery Knit Long by Stephen West and I think that I am going to wait um, and see what everyone's shawl looks like. So uh, the Mystery Knit Along by Stephen West, it's uh, always divided up into four parts, four clues. You get one clue each week. Um, the first clue is out today. So today's October 8th. I think it will be out in a few hours. Usually it's around noon, but um, who knows. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to wait and see what it looks like at the beginning before I make the decision if I buy the pattern and then cast on the shawl. But I know I always learn a whole lot. So yeah, and I also have a video about me um, doing some surgery on one of my old mystery knit uh shawls. So uh, I will either link it here. I don't know if I can still do that in YouTube, uh, but it's the one previous uh, video on my channel. So the other project that I'm very excited about is <laughs> my pumpkin wreath. I started this last year and um, a very last minute actually for Halloween. Um, and I love it, but it's just a little bit minimalistic. Uh, it's just, yeah, it needs some more pumpkins. And I used uh, Scapius Cotton Aid, Scapius Katona, just, you know, 100% cotton yarns. Um, these are all knit. Um, so I basically knit a tube and then sew it up um, at the bottom, sew it up at the top, um, and then these are finished. These are also done in color work, color work rib. And then for these, so you also sew them up on the, the bottom and the top, and then you kind of uh, squish them down and you you sew, um, kind of, <laughs> how do you, how do you explain this? Uh, let me, let me take a ball of yarn. So, right, right, this is going to work. Um, so let's say your yarn comes out of the top and then you take it through the bottom and then, you know, poke it through to the top again and see how that kind of creates this dent. You, get, you then do that five times and then you get this pumpkin shape. It could also be a flower, but um, yeah. So, and look at this little cute one. Uh, so I'm going to create some more pumpkins. 
for my pumpkin wreath and I thought I could also create a crochet or knit like a witch's hat and a cat and a cauldron and just maybe some some purple clouds up top just to make it very witchy um, yeah because I bought Halloween candy this year and I wanted to be you know uh, <laughs> clear for the kids that I have candy <laughs> and that they can come knock on my door. Um, yeah, so um, my pumpkin wreath. Are you making any Halloween decorations? Please do share because I need some ideas. I'm, I made some paper bats last year to hang in front of the window. Uh, I think I saved those so I might just hang them up again. But uh, very cute. So I am going to work some more on that project this weekend. And yeah, maybe the new mystery knit along. So we will see. Um, yeah, so that's it for this episode. It was one of the few times that I filmed this in the morning. Uh, I have to remember that the sunlight is not ideal. I hope to still be uploading this today on Friday. Um, I hope you have a lovely weekend ahead of you and hopefully lots of craft fairs, um, albeit safely, you know, if, if you don't want to go out, if you don't feel safe, then please do, don't feel pressured to because um, it's, I think it's going to be very overwhelming for me as well to go to a craft fair again. Uh, I don't think I'll be doing a lot of hugging because <laughs> although I'm a hugger, I'm also an introvert and <laughs> I think I want to keep people at a distance for now. Yeah, but um, I hope you have a lovely time and I'll see y'all in two weeks. See you then. Bye-bye.